Three-time All-Star Matt Carpenter is back in St. Louis, back for his 14th year in the Grande Ligas, and after a couple of years uh, in uh, places like the Bronx and San Diego, he is back in a very familiar circumstance and happy to be there. Sh certainly fans are happy to have him, and we're happy to have him with us on the stove on this Monday morning. Matt, good morning. Thanks for taking some time. I, I can't imagine how great it feels for you to be back with the Cardinals. Tell us about how camp has gone and how good it feels to put that red color back on your back. Oh, man, good morning, guys. Thanks for having me. Oh, it is, uh, it is certainly... Uh, a great feeling, um, you know, having having uh, the Cardinal red back on, back on, and in this uniform. I mean, it, it's been it's been uh, a, certainly a homecoming and something that uh, you know I'm so honored and blessed to get to kick, to get to do again. Uh, camp's been off to a great start. We got a great group of guys, um, you know, looking forward to a really big season, and um, I'm really optimistic about what this group can do, and uh, it's just a pleasure to be here. Hey, Matt, was this a, driven by uh, your old friend John Mosellock? Obviously, the 11 years that you spent with St. Louis, and it was awesome. Uh, certainly, uh, several playoffs, uh, a World Series, a couple of them, actually. I know you just got called up in 11, but uh, how much of that was based on your relationship with John Mosellock and the Cardinals' front office? Yeah, I mean, certainly played a role for sure. Um, you know, I've got so many great relationships here. Uh, you know, it, it all happened. You know, really, um, you know, kind of out of the out of the blue. Uh, you know, it wasn't really on my radar. Um, you know, in the, during the off season, you know, getting traded to Atlanta, ultimately getting released by them, and then, you know, had some teams reach out. Uh, we, we were kind of thinking what what the you know talking with my agent, kind of figuring out what the next steps were, and. Um, you know, had some teams reach out, and, and he, you know, kind of even gave me some ideas of who he thought were were going to be teams. And you know, St. Louis really wasn't one we we really had on our radar. But um, you know, when Mo called, I mean, for me and for us, it was a, it was a no-brainer. I mean, this there's, you know, this is where I want to be, and um, you know, really happy that it all worked out. I know that Matt, when you played with the Yankees and the Padres, you were very present with those organizations, uh, and you didn't have a lot of time to keep tabs on what was happening in the Gateway to the West. But was there a part of you that felt, uh, hey, I'm going to check a Cardinals box score just to see what's going on, or tune into a Cardinals highlight over the past couple of years? Huh. Oh, for sure. I mean, you know, I, I'd be lying if I if I, you know, wasn't saying. I mean, I, I, obviously. You know, outside of when I was in a Padre uniform and we were playing them, or in a Yankee uniform we were playing them. I mean, I'm still pulling for them. You know, I mean, um, always been. Uh, you know, this has been a ho this has been home. I mean, I spent so much time here, and um, you know, you always you get your buddies on the team that you follow, and 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 obviously the organization's success. You care about that, and you know, like I said, as as long as I wasn't directly competing with them, I mean, I was still checking the box score and pulling for these guys. All right, I, I, I'm looking at your facial hair. I'm digging on it, Maddie. You went from the big beard <laughs> to having to almost have no facial hair. I guess you had the mustache with the Yankees. Big 70s mustache with uh, the Padres. Is this going to be the look for Matt Carpenter this year? Or are you going to go back to uh, Grizzly Adams? You know, I, I like to try to keep it a little more clean cut. Um, you know, it got out of control during COVID. The beard got a little thick. and. Um, the mustache was obviously a, a different look, and that was based off of more of the organizational rules in New York. So, yeah, I think this is probably the look that's going to stay for 2024 here. Matt, we know we know what it's like as fans to watch uh, generations of baseball families get to the big leagues. Um, and there is a question here, believe me. What, what's it like for you when you play with a guy for many years and he's one of your closer friends in the game? And then his son gets to the big leagues and is on the verge of superstardom. And you go to his son's wedding. I mean, this this has to be an amazing kind of feeling and passage of time for you. Here you are at Jackson Holiday's wedding with Matt and the family. Tell us about the event and how you felt. Wow, oh, man, it was uh, it was so awesome. Uh, you know, I, I've known Jackson since he was probably you know five years old. I mean. Maybe younger. I, I, just to to see the growth, and um, I'll, I'll tell you what's super humbling. When I go out to Stillwater, Oklahoma, to to hit with 
Matt and his two sons, and I feel like I'm like an A ball compared to these guys. <laughs> like I, I, I've got, I've got to like play catch up. I mean, it's it's, it's very. Uh, wow. If you want to feel bad about where you are as a hitter, go hit with the Holiday family. I mean, those guys can absolutely rake. Jackson, I mean, I mean this guy, he's he's going to be special. I mean, he already is, and and then and then you know Matt's younger son. Um, is right around the corner and you know not to mention you know their dad was an incredible player so yeah it's a it's a it's a special family and uh, dear friends and um, uh, it's gonna be fun to follow Jackson this year and I wouldn't doubt I, you know there's a really good chance we're gonna be on the same field here um, I think they come to us the first month so the way he's swinging the bat uh, it's gonna be hard for them to Baltimore to keep him keep him off that roster I've been uh, I've been checking Airbnb in Stillwater, Oklahoma, for the last couple of months to see if they put the house up there for a couple of days or so. There's no availability, unfortunately, because I'd I'd love to I'd love to use the facility, <laughs> the Holiday Place. Hey, uh, before we let you go, Matt, um, give us a sense for some of the young guys in camp. We've talked about this the last couple of years regarding the Cardinals. There's like this glut of really talented young outfielders there. Uh, when you put your eyes on this group for the first time, what were your takeaways? Man, we got, we got, we do. I mean, we've got a lot of great uh, young position players that are, are certainly making, uh, you know, making their names heard. I mean, obviously, you know, Jordan Walker, he's going to be a big role, be a big part of uh, what we're doing this season. Um, we got a, another guy, uh, Victor Scott, um, probably our best defensive uh, outfielder in our organization, who's uh, who's having a great camp. Um, and you know, I, you know, all the way across the diamond. I mean, we, you know, we got a Mason went it short, uh, young player with a lot of ability that we're really uh, high on. And um, yeah, I mean, I, l listen, I, I think that uh, you know you're going to see a lot of really good young players here in St. Louis, and then you combine those with some of the good, you know, cornerstone veterans that we have, and Goldschmidt and, and Arenado. I mean, this 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 lineup's got a chance to be pretty good, and. Um, I'm excited to to see how it all how it all plays out. Matt, appreciate your time this morning. I know uh, speaking on behalf of Cardinal Nation, so many fans are pleased to see you back there, and we wish yeah. you the best in 2024. Way to go, guys! I appreciate it. Thank you.